you have a lot of definitions because by defining things, it gives us the information that we need in order to prove things later, in order to make comparisons. So first we have geometry. That is way too fat. Geometry. Geometry comes from the Greek, geo meaning earth and metria meaning measure. So geometry is literally, if you translated it, the measurements of earth. Um, we study what's called Euclidean geometry. There was a Greek mathematician named Euclid, and in 300 BC, he collected all of the known information about geometry into a single book called The Elements, and it was the very first math textbook that ever existed. And so that's why it's called Euclidean geometry, even though he didn't come up with everything, he was the first person that put it all together. And Euclidean geometry exists in our plane, where we live. So in two-dimensional, so flat, and three-dimensional space. Um, other, there are other types of geometry called non-Euclidean geometries. We don't study those at this level, but they don't exist here in our realm of existence. Yeah, they, they don't exist here, so we don't really study those. Okay, um, a point. Points are very important in math. A point is a location represented by a dot, just a dot. You usually label it with a capital letter, and you would read that as point A. Okay, a line is an infinite set of points represented by a string of dots continuing without end in both directions. So we don't actually draw all the dots, but lines go on forever and ever. And we pick two points on the line. And so this would be line AB. And the symbol for that, so you don't have to write the word line, is AB with a line over top of it. Now, lines have arrows on both ends because they go forever and ever and ever. And then we have a plane. And a plane is an inf infinite set of points that is represented by a parallelogram. And I'm going to cheat on that one. So this represents a plane, and when we draw it like this and we label some points in it, we're implying that it goes on forever. So it's basically a plane is like a sheet of paper that never ends. It just keeps going. It's flat, but it just keeps going forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And we can call this plane M, or we can call it ABC. Space. Space is the set of all points. So that is, like, if we're in this room, if you're thinking in terms of geometry, this room is full of points everywhere, infinite numbers of points taking up all this space. But it goes on forever. Okay, um, in geometry we also have theorems. Space is... It's a, like a set of all points, so like in this room. If you imagined this room is filled up with an infinite number of little tiny points going in three. Never ending yeah, never ending points. And that comes, comprises like the dimension, right? Mm -hmm. the dimension is like the space. Yeah, the dimension is like the space. So you live in the third dimension. Third dimension. Um, a theorems are statements that need to be proven. Okay, so a theorem can be logical, it can make sense, but you still have to prove it. A postulate is a statement that does not need to be proven. Okay, And postulates are used to prove theorems, and then other theorems are used to prove theorems as well. So once you've proven a theorem, it's good, and then you can use it to prove other theorems. And you start, though, by using postulates, which are statements that are accepted as true without proof. Just an example of a postulate, I am a human being. Do you guys accept that as true without me proving it? That would be a postulate. Okay, my theorem would be, I can fly. You'd want me to prove that, right? So that would be a theorem. But I can't fly, so.
between is in or through the space that separates two things. I know it's silly that we have to define between, but we do. And then intersect Intersect is to cross each other, so the set of all points that figures have in common, these are both intersections. And we can intersect at a point, we can intersect at a line, we can intersect at a plane. Okay, array is a straight line extending from a point. So you have a point and you have a line and it extends out. So this would be called ray AB, or you can do AB with a ray on top of it, so one error. Now, this is important. If the point on the end is A, then A has to come in front, and the arrow points away from A. If we had like this, and go that way, this is not ray AB. This is ray BA. Okay, so when you're talking about a line, it doesn't matter what order the letters come in because lines go on in forever in each direction. But because a ray has a specific direction, the order of the letters matter. So you put the end point first, the second letter next, and then the arrow goes to the right. Okay, does that make sense? Yes, no? Yeah, okay. Um, a segment, whenever you actually have drawn what you called a line in the past, you were actually drawing a segment. Um, segments are pieces of lines. They're just a little chunk. And they have two endpoints. So this is segment AB. Or you can put A, B with a piece of a segment over top of it with no arrows. And then endpoints are the point where the segment or ray stops. So if I have a ray or if I have segment, these are all endpoints. So this is an endpoint, and then a segment has two endpoints. And length is the measure of how long something is from end to end. We can measure a segment. A segment has length. But a line and array don't have length because they go on forever, and so they're not measurable. Um, just like a plane, you can't measure a plane because it goes on forever, so it's not measurable. Okay, so um, the segment is finite. Okay, so we have infinite and we have finite. Infinite goes on forever. Finite has an end. So, um, okay, for example, my paycheck is finite, right? It has an, there's only a set, certain amount to it. Whereas Bill Gates's paycheck might be infinite, I'm not sure. Okay, so finite things can be measured. The measurements might be huge, but they can still be measured. Whereas an infinite thing goes on forever. Well, it's not a line; it's a piece of a line. So a segment is like a chunk of a line. Because um, a segment, a line goes on forever. So you can't say a segment is a line with an end because lines go on forever, but a segment is like a piece of a line. So you could just take and like you cut, cut it out. And so it has two ends. I haven't heard probably before. So we have something called collinear. And I want to make sure I spell this correct. Yes, it does have two L's. Okay, collinear are points located on the same line. So if I have a line and I have a point here, and I have a point here. These are collinear. Okay, and then we have non-collinear. 
So if they're collinear, they're on the same line. Non-collinear means they're not on the same line. So if I have a line and I have a point right here and I have some point over here, these are not collinear. So they're non-collinear. And then we have coplanar. And these are points located in the same plane. So here's my plane. Planes are parallelograms. And so I have a point here and I have a point here and they're in the same plane. So they're coplanar. And then I can have non-coplanar. And so if I have a plane and I have some point here and then I have some point way over here that's not in this plane, it's kind of above the plane. These are non-coplanar. They're not in the same plane. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not a line or plane where they would be. They're just not if you're talking about this particular plane and this particular line. Okay. Oh, wait, sorry, coplanar points. And then we have um, coplanar lines. Okay, so we have a plane. And we have like two lines that are in the same plane. Those are coplanar. And then we have non-coplanar lines. So if I have a plane here and I have this lovely line that's right in this plane and then I have some line over here that's not, those are non-coplanar. These definitions are important to understand because in geometry sometimes you are asked to draw a figure and so you might be asked to draw you know collinear points or coplanar lines. And so you need to know what that is to be able to perform the operation to do it. Okay, these are geometry postulates. And from our definitions, postulates are statements that do not have to be proven. So these, we just accept them as true. Okay, so we accept as true that a line and a plane have an infinite number of points in them. We can't draw it. Um, yeah, you, you do need these postulates. Um, we can't draw it, but we accept it as true. If we have any two points, there's only one line containing them. And I can show you that. If I have a point here and a point here, I can only draw this one line through the two of them. I can't draw. Lines are straight, so I can't, you know, come around. If there's only one way to draw a line through those two points. If I have three non-collinear points, right, so these are not all on the same line, I can only draw one plane that contains all three of those points. If two points are in a plane, so I've got points here in a plane, then the line that they are on also has to be in that plane. And then if two planes intersect, they intersect in exactly one line, so I have a plane here, and I have a plane here, and they intersect right there. So there's a line where they intersect. And to visualize that, if you think of, if you took two sheets of paper, and you were somehow able to magically put this paper through this other piece of paper, Can you kind of see how it would make a line? The reason we need to know so much vocabulary is because the geometry was a vocabulary-based math. We have theorems, we have postulates, we have pictures. And in order for everyone to draw the same picture, they had to come up with words that identified what you're supposed to draw. That's why you need to know the vocabulary. So if I want to draw point Y is on line PQ, which is in plane T, okay? I'm going to start with point Y, and it's on a line. Oops, it would help if I actually put it on the line. It's on a line, and that line is PQ, which is in a plane. And that plane is T. 
Now everybody reading this should be able to draw just about the same picture. Now maybe the line is facing in a different direction and maybe they put the little T in the top corner or something, but it'll basically be this picture. And that's why the vocabulary is so important. Let you know that if I write LM with a line over it, that is saying that there's a line, LM, and it'll look like maybe that. Or, you know, it could also look like that because it doesn't matter with a line what order they go in. Or, you know, it could be pointing straight up and down or it could be off at an angle or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so... Distance, distance is easy. Distance is the extent of space between two objects or places. You guys are used to distance, but distance between here and your house, distance between me and you, distance is easy. Okay, congruent. Congruent means it's the same shape and the same size. So you don't have to write it out this way. You can just write same shape and same size. These two binders are congruent. They're the same shape and they're the same size. This binder and this folder are not congruent. Okay. Congruent has a symbol so that you don't actually have to write the words. You do like a squiggle over an equal. It's not very pretty. I'll do it again. Oh, well, there you go. Squiggle over an equal. But to draw it, you do squiggle equal. Okay. Bisect is to divide into two equal parts, or you can also say cut in half. All right. A segment bisector is a point, a line, or a segment, a part of a line, right? Or a plane that divides a segment into two congruent segments. So basically, it's anything that cuts a segment in half. We can't cut a line in half because lines are infinite. So what's half of infinite? Who? Here? Well, this one is, okay, a bisect, to bisect is to cut in half. A segment bisector specifically cuts a segment in half. And then there are angle bisectors and other types of bisectors, but right now we're just going to talk about the segment bisector. So a segment bisector is anything that cuts a segment in half. We cannot cut a line in half. We cannot cut a ray in half. We cannot cut a plane in half because they are infinite. And you cannot cut infinity in half. So the only things you can cut in half are things that are measurable that have a beginning and an end. And a coordinate is the numbers in an ordered pair that give the position of a point relative to the x and y axis. As you guys have seen these. These are called coordinate planes. You have an x axis and you have a y axis and things get graphed there. And then they have a point x, y. This is a coordinate. And coordinates are just directions, essentially. If you look at this, like this would be saying, like, I'm going to go x blocks east and y blocks north. If I was over here, I'd go X blocks west and Y blocks south or something. They're just directions. Okay, so a number line is just a visual representation of the way numbers are in order. Numbers are ordered. It's an ordered set because they go in order. And number lines show us that. Um, Measure. You guys don't have to write this one down. I know that you know what measurement means, but measurement means to, to ascertain or discover the dimensions, quantity, or capacity of an object. So you can measure length, volume, density, weight, um, how many things, you know, just measure. You guys know what measure means. You don't have to write that one down. Um, midpoint. This one you do want, though. Okay, midpoint is a point at the middle or center. It has to be equally distant from both ends. So if I have a line segment, 
and I have my midpoint, which I'm going to call M for midpoint, then that means that this distance here and this distance here are equal. Okay, so it's, it's the halfway point. And um, you don't have to write down this definition either. But a ruler is a thin strip with a straight edge and markings in whole and fractional units of length. That is the technical definition for a ruler. You do not have to write that down. You guys know what a ruler is, right? Yeah, okay, so you're good. I want you to make sure, though, that you do write down midpoint. Okay, you do need to know what a midpoint is, so for sure write that one down.